In the small town of Stafford, Virginia, the biggest supermarket is the giant food store. Early on the morning of April 19, 1989, employee Milton Braxton was already hard at work there. This one? Milton is the best at what he does. The Goodwill Ambassador, that is a quote from one of the giant training manuals. You're the first person the customer sees, and you're the last person they see. Goodbye now. Instead of attending a breakfast honoring him as the employee of the month, Milton had chosen to come to work as usual. Teresa Val was just finishing her weekly grocery shopping with her friend Linda Fisher. She had a lot of stuff to do. I only had a few things to pick up. Teresa went her way, I went mine. I did what I had to do, checked out. Four months pregnant with her third child, Teresa put her daughter in the car with her friend Linda. She then drove them around to the loading zone to pick up her eight bags of groceries from Milton. I could do it a day. Good, how are you? Oh, fine. Good. Oh, fine. let me move some stuff. Take it down. As they loaded the groceries into the trunk, another car pulled up behind them with a man and a little girl. I turned around, saw a little girl running around in the front seat with the car in back of us. His legs were caught in between those bumpers. Somebody help. I, I knew his legs were broke. He was so stunned he couldn't even talk. You could see in his eyes the pain. And I was so hysterical. I mean, my stomach was tense. That my back was hurting. Milton is hurt. He's hurt. Call was placed to 911. Staff 9 emergency. The call came in at 10:05 a.m. A rescue squad was immediately dispatched. When I ran outside, all I saw was Milton laying on the ground. Milton, you all right? What happened? Grocery manager Tim Conklin came out as soon as he saw what had happened. At that time, somebody screamed, "Get a blanket! He's going to go into shock." You just hang on. I called my mother, told her what had happened. I had real bad cramps in the front, the lower part of my stomach, and in my back. It felt just like that I was going to have a miscarriage with that baby. Outside, Teresa tried to comfort Milton. Milton said, I can't really feel my legs, Teresa. And I said, well, you're going to be just fine. EMTs Bobby Talley, Lena Branham, and John Peterson arrived within a few minutes of the call. He was laying on the ground on his side. The bones were broken into and they were separated. Um, Milton, I'm going to cut your pants leg, all right? I'll cut your pants. You'll get over it. He had to cut his pants up, too, around his pocket area to put the splints on. So we had a long frack pack, what we call a frack pack splint. We had two of those and put those together. He was in a lot of pain, but he didn't act like it. When you have a fracture and you straighten it, it's pinching off the muscles and it hurts bad. If they're hurting real bad, I just give them my hand and I tell them to squeeze it. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Before they loaded him in the ambulance, I kissed him on his cheek because I was so grateful that he had pushed me out of the way. Milton asked him to go with him to the hospital. Milton just, you know, ooh, his legs hurt. Oh, my legs hurt. I told him to scream, let it out. You know, but he's not that type of person. Soft-spoken, easygoing guy. Didn't want anybody to know he was in any kind of pain. The baby is positioned to the, 
to this side. Subsequent sonographs taken by Teresa's obstetricians seem to show nothing wrong with the fetus. But had she been hit by the car, it would almost certainly have caused a miscarriage. Milton Braxton's legs were both broken when he was struck by the car. He spent two weeks recuperating in the hospital. And we stuck a little red basket on top of the safe and put a little sign on it and said Milton's mailbox. You know, I mean, people drop 10 and 15 cars in there a day. Oh, yes, indeed. It was enough to do it to cover the whole wall and then some. We think we can go back to Eight months after the accident, Milton is still undergoing physical therapy, hoping he'll soon be strong enough to return to work. Well, it's typical of him to do something like this, to, you know, to out of his way to help somebody else. It, it, was, it wouldn't surprise me when I heard what he had done. I don't mind helping anybody. And I figure one will need a both of us to get hurt, so I just shoved her out the way. And now I'll take a chance on getting out the way. You know, after I get her out the way myself, and, but I couldn't do it, and I just got hit. I feel like he's like my guardian angel, because without him there, you know, this baby, it, it means so much to me to, to carry Holly. And, you know, when, when, when she's born, I want him to hold her and feel the joy that he has given me and my husband both. On October 31st, 1989, Holly Ann Vowell was born, a healthy baby girl. Uh, let me see. <laughs> yeah, you gaining a, you gaining some pounds. Here, yeah, you can make that small. Here, yeah, you can make that small. <laughs> Teresa's husband, Michael, also feels strongly about Milton. How are you? You have to be exceptional to do what he did. If it wasn't for his courage, his character, there's no way that baby would be born. He's just one of a million. He just loves people, you know. That's the only way to describe him. He just, he doesn't think about himself. He thinks about others first. It's good to see that there, there are people out there that really do and truly care about other people. It, you know, it just shows me that, that, yeah, there are some good people left in this world, and, and Milton Braxton's one of them.